Well, he had a saying that I actually didn't have when I was with him, but he, he, he formed the saying at Stanford and then, uh, and then, and then back at Auburn when we, when Rowdy and I helped convince him to go back to Auburn for one more run before he, uh, fully, fully retired. Cause he had retired from Stanford and it was believe in belief. And at that, and to me, that sort of confused me a little bit, even when he sort of came up with it, but I think it's exactly Richard quick. So Richard was the kind of guy that if he believed in you and, and, and you believed in your skill and you believed in your ability, uh, there really wasn't a limit with Richard. And, and he would set the standard of training at that level. So he would match that, if that makes sense. I mean, I, would t- I mean t- honestly, today I was, in, I was working with one of my uh, pro swimmers at, with, in the endless pool uh, nearby here because that's one of the places we can get into. And uh, it was Dylan Carter, actually. Dylan uh, swam at USC. He was a great swimmer for college. I just told Dylan, I said, Dylan, during the pandemic, you've improved enormously because you're coming to practice. We're change, you're changing your stroke because we're really working hard on sort of lightening, uh, making his stroke more light in the water because he's just used to pounding and grinding and muscling the water. We're trying to soften him up a little bit and feel the water more. And he's really done a nice job of that. And I, and, and I said, you've devoted yourself to, you know, this path of progress. I said, what I need you to do now is start believing yourself more and start advocating for yourself more and start asking for my time more. And because I will give you the time and you deserve the time now of, of whatever I can give you. And so I think that's the kind of thing that, that Richard would do. He would, if you were someone who he sensed like Rowdy uh, as a, a person who believed you believed in what he would present to you and the challenges he'd present. He was a master at that. And, and, you know, whether it be Jenny Thompson or Summer Sanders or, uh, uh, you know, Leah Loveless, you know, eventually, you know, it be, became a little bit conflicting with Derek Torres and Jenny Thompson, but, you know, people that Richard Quick worked with, they would go above and beyond, especially in magic moments. And I was standing behind him when Misty Hyman won the tuner fly you know, at the Olympics in 2000 over in Sydney, Australia, when she upset, you know, the, the Madam Butterfly of the time, Susie O'Neill. And, and he did it by making a very uh, aggressive and, and risky move of at the meet within days before a race. You know, Misty was known for being an underwater kicker in the early days when people weren't doing that as much. She was the best at it. He actually took two or three kicks off of her turns right before the finals of the race. He was, he was, he was measuring that during the race. He said, yeah, let's take some kicks off. And he took a huge chance like that. And again, I, I was sitting in the front seat experiencing this as a young coach. You know, by then I was coaching. And I had a couple of make the Olympic team, so I was on the Olympic staff with him. And I saw this all breaking down and happening. And I was like, it's like, are you sure, Richard? Do you want to like take her – number one weapon away. And he, and, and he just had a sense like that to, to do that. And I saw him, the most important thing though, is he's also willing to, to be bold enough to do it and do the right thing. And so I think that's something that, that sort of has stuck in my mind all the time is, is uh, you know, how do you, how do you, at the end of the day, it's helping the athletes be the best they can be. So reaching their full potential, their true full potential. And to do that, you know, sometimes we coaches have to intervene. Some coaches, sometimes we have to pull away and let them experience the failure or let them, uh, let them be the hero of their own story. And we don't need to be the hero. So I think that's what effective coaching is. I learned a lot of that from Richard by watching it happen, you know, in front of my eyes.